morning. It's 9 o'clock and we have a quorum. Uh, be sure and put your cell phones on uh, vibrate, please. Uh, we're going to have the prayers going to be given by Amy Mazella, Peace Ambassador, and Pledge. Terry, would you like to do the pledge? All right, please stand. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for inviting me to do the prayer for you guys. Dear God, we, learn for le we yearn for leadership. Thank you for these men and women of inspiration and insight, for providing visionaries to build nations and communities. In your image, stewards dedicated to justice, unafraid to, fa unafraid to face the challenges of your day, so that our city, state, and nation will resonate with compassion and health, justice and mercy, kindness and peace. Dear God, bless, please bless these city leaders with dedication and foresight, fortitude and imagination to solve the complex issues that affect the future of San Angelo. As our community continues to thrive, we are thankful to live in a time when liberty and equality are aspirations of our leadership. Source and shelter grant safety and security to our community so that truth and harmony will resound throughout San Angelo. Let the light of wisdom shine brightly throughout our meeting today as we pray for San Angelo to be a shining example for communities throughout our state. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Those are pretty boots you have. All right. We're going to get on to the consent agenda. Uh, the commission may request for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for presentation and public comment. Otherwise, the consent agenda will be considered in one vote. It's a biggie consideration of approving the August 21st, 2017 Planning Commission regular meeting. All right. We have uh, first, second. Okay, second was Mark. Ryan was the first. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, going down to the regular agenda, subdivision plats. The Planning Commission has final authority for approval. Appeals may be directed to the City Council. A, OCM subdivision, section one, replat. Good morning, Planning Commissioners. Uh, Jeff Fisher, Senior Planner with the City of St. Angelo. Uh, first case today is a, a subdivision. It's actually a replat of three uh, different uh, subdivision plats consolidated into one, hence the new name OCM Subdivision Section 1. Uh, it's on 4.837 acres uh, at the northeast corner of uh, Bay Street and Upton uh, in the ML Zoning District, SMD number 3, Harry Thomas's district in the Paul Ann neighborhood. So, uh, a couple years ago, uh, you, some of you are, may, may remember the that we're here, the uh, applicant had applied for a conditional use for a metal salvage and recycling facility and was approved uh, on this property. Uh, part of that conditional use uh, required that these uh, alleys here in yellow, uh, which basically are, are all part of the applicant's holdings, they don't uh, go any further out, outside of that, were consolidated into, uh, into one property as a replat, or they were to move the buildings. Obviously, the buildings are part of their facility, so they chose the, the latter uh, to do the abandonment. Abandonment was approved last year, December 6, by City Council, uh, and the condition of that abandonment was that they required the replat, uh, taking the alleys uh, and the three different plats into one uh, within one year. So they're here today. It would expire in uh, December. Uh, we took a look at the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, the comprehensive plan is designated industrial. Uh, this property fits with that, being a recycling and metal salvage facility, uh, conforms with the intent of purpose statements, uh, this plat uh, in the comprehensive plan uh, talks about logical orderly development and layout of subdivision lots. Uh, none of the street network would change, uh, essentially would just be consolidated into one uh, plat. Uh, as mentioned, the conditional use uh, a few years ago. We took a look at the existing street network. The applicant has applied for, uh, for four variances, um, and three of them were to do with the uh, street pattern. Uh, so the first variance uh, was on Vec Street. Uh, which is essentially this purple area here as a dead end. 
Uh, Vec Street is 27 feet wide as a local street in the city needs to be 40 feet. Uh, it's also uh, a collegiate road, not a, a paved surface. Uh, so there's two variances on that from the collegiate surface in Chapter 9 and Chapter 10 from the road width itself. Uh, on Bay Street, which is a collector that runs down in this way, connects up to Loop 306 and, and extends down, uh, that road is also deficient in paving width, uh, but it is paved with asphalt. Uh, so they're re requesting a variance from the required 50 feet to maintain a 33-foot paving width. The fourth variance we'll get to in a few minutes um, is the uh, not connecting to a city sewer main. Uh, they're using currently a private septic system, so we'll get there in a second, but this is essentially the layout. <coughs> we went over the variances just quickly. The variance uh, from Chapter 935 of the subdivision ordinance to allow a 110-foot-long portion of Vec Street, that's the dead end street to the north, to remain a collegiate surface. Uh, and then the variance from um, the ordinance to allow Vec Street, an urban local street, to maintain 27 feet instead of 40. A variance from Chapter 10382 of the subdivision ordinance to allow North Bay Street, an urban collector street, to maintain 33 feet instead of 50. And then that fourth variance, uh, variance from Chapter 12, 1 of the subdivision ordinance requiring the installation of a wastewater main within and or adjacent to sub subdivision applicants requesting that they maintain the private system instead. Uh, staff rationale is as follows. Uh, we recommend, we'll start with the three paving variances. We do recommend approval uh, based on the following four criteria uh, in Chapter 1 of the subdivision ordinance. Uh, number one, uh, we believe that it would not be detrimental to public safety after um, a site review of the area and talking with our, our assistant city engineer. Uh, there were low traffic counts for the area as determined by our engineering services department. Uh, the current street widths we believe do not pose a safety risk. Uh, third, all of those lots have already been platted. Uh, they've got homes on the west side and to the south and some industrial development along there. So uh, if they were to replat and pave this, the extra five feet or the extra six feet, it wouldn't do a lot because it would actually create an irregular jog in, in the street uh, in this particular case. Uh, number two, uh, staff does not believe uh, in one sense this is unique. The additional right of, the applicant had mentioned that the additional right of way seems to be more on the west side of the street and that uh, there's not a lot of room on the east side. We don't believe that's a test for uniqueness on its own. However, given the existing uh, narrow streets and all of the lots have already been previously platted, we believe that makes it unique and so therefore we support the variance. Uh, third, uh, we don't believe a hardship, uh, or we do believe a hardship would be created here in that the existing street would already be sufficient. Um, many times we would say the applicant should pave the extra street with. In this case, they'd be doing it and no one else probably would. So we do believe that uh, there'd be hardship there. And fourth, we don't believe any, um, there'd be any variance to any other provisions here. Uh, the zoning ordinance is ML, the lots are platted into one lot, uh, be, allow a smooth transition. The alleys have been abandoned already. That's uh, the first three variances. The fourth variance about the water main, uh, we uh, also support the variance after uh, further discussions with engineering and our internal review. We believe that um, this is an existing recycling facility. So for now, they're already using the private system. Uh, had this been a new development that's gonna generate a lot of water capacity or need to connect to public uh, services, obviously in most cases we would say no, but in this case, we believe it's functional for what they're already doing. Uh, any new construction, however, there'll be a condition of approval that we would require an evaluation of the existing private uh, system, and if that exceeds capacity or requires any improvements at that time at permitting, they would have to do that. Uh, two, we believe that uh, this is a unique situation given the recycling facility does not require domestic water and has continued to operate. Uh, I believe, I don't know if it's been a recycling facility, but I know it's, uh, we couldn't find any record of any uh, public sewer connections, and so it has existed that way for a while. Uh, third, uh, there would be a hardship created. Uh, if the applicant would have to, I understand, extend a grinder pump due to the elevation uh, for a small amount of discharge, and so that actually would be uh, cost prohibitive in that respect. And fourthly, uh, we don't believe any other um, uh, ordinance provisions would be varied. Uh, would not significant anything other than the, the private septic system. So therefore, staff recommends approval of the replat, uh, approval of a variance from Chapter 935 of the subdivision ordinance to allow a 110-foot long portion of X Street to remain a collegiate surface. Uh, two, to approve a variance from Chapter 10382 of the subdivision ordinance to allow Vex Street, an urban local street, 
to maintain a 27-foot street width in lieu of the required 40 feet or 36 feet with the four-foot sidewalk. Uh, fourth, a variance from Chapter 10382 of the Subdivision Ordinance. We recommend approval to allow North Bay Street an urban collector to maintain a 33-foot street width in lieu of the required 50 feet. And finally, uh, to approve a variance from Chapter 121 of the Subdivision Ordinance requiring the installation of a wastewater main within and or adjacent to such subdivision. Now, these are the summary of approval conditions. If you'd like me to read them into the record, that concludes our presentation. Any questions? <clears throat> Public comment? Good morning, the Commission. Herb Hooker with SKG. Um, as stated, this replat is really a condition of the alley closure, which was a condition of the special use granted. So this is the third and hopefully final stage to get everything legitimized as far as this business goes. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. No questions. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? Right, there being none, do I have a motion? Ryan made the motion. Mark seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, 7 0. Rezoning. City Council has final authority of approvals of rezonings. A, B, P, D, 17 01, 87, and 29 LLC. Okay, good morning again, Planning Commissioners. Jeff Fisher, Senior Planner with the City of San Angelo. Second case today is a plan development, 1701 uh, for 87 and 29 LLC. Again, some of you may be familiar uh, with the adjacent development over here, uh, which was Kirby Park Villas. It was approved last year as PD 1601. Uh, this will be under a separate uh, ownership uh, structure. And so uh, rather than doing a PD amendment, we've come in with a brand new PD, but it will be immediately uh, adjacent and have some connectivity we'll show you in a few minutes. Uh, so this is PD 1701 and this development will be called Kirby uh, Commons. So it's on 5.244 acres of land southwest of Martin Luther King Drive and West 29th Street uh, in the Blackshire neighborhood SMD number four, Lucy Gonzalez's district. Uh, the zoning is CG and CGCH uh, over here and the future land use is neighborhood center. These are some photos uh, looking at the, the area in question uh, to walk through some uh, grass and uh, dirt to get to it because it is kind of in the middle right now, but there will be uh, uh, conditions in the future when they plot to have connectivity. Uh, this is looking north at the um, Lakeview Town Center Plaza, and then if you go past that building, you're at Walmart, so just to give you some proximity. Uh, this is looking west at the future development. You have uh, Champion Express Car Wash over here, uh, O'Reilly and, and Shannon. Uh, looking towards uh, 87. And this is looking east, uh, Kirby Park, uh, PD 1601 is, is under construction now. Uh, they've done all their approvals as well as that PD last year, so you can see it going up uh, behind it. And again, this is north at that retail plaza. This is looking south at uh, one of the Shannon facilities here. Uh, and just to go over this quickly, uh, the zoning, This all you're doing today is uh, if you want to move forward is the plan development for the, for the uh, proposed zone change. Uh, as a condition of approval, they will have to plat and have direct and abutting access. So this is one of the um, possibilities through uh, West 29th Street, but not the only one. This is just to get, again, proximity so you can see where the, the Walmart is. So this is the site concept plan that the applicant uh, has submitted. Uh, three buildings, this project, uh, uh, three stories in each building, total of 72 units, uh, very close to what they've approved for uh, phase one. Um, it have a, a connectivity here. Uh, we're recommending a sidewalk that would connect to phase one, uh, as well as possibly a future connection to uh, 29th Street, uh, and possibly putting a sidewalk in here too. The city is coming in as part of our capital improvements plan to uh, include sidewalks on 29th, so very close to Walmart very close to retail and very close to uh, the first phase development. This is the landscape plan, the conceptual plan that's uh, submitted. Uh, got a variety of different uh, tree species. We will be looking at a, a final uh, revised plan uh, as part of a condition of approval later, but generally follows uh, phase one. The building elevations uh, will uh, match phase one in terms of colors and materials. Uh, you've got brick along the first floor and then the, uh, the cement board siding uh, as you go on uh, levels two and three. So just to, I've 
pass those around to you just so you have an idea of what they're doing. Uh, this is the clubhouse elevation, a small building in the middle of the site for activities. Um, again, same thing, it will match the, uh, the project immediately east. Staff rationale is to recommend approval uh, for the following. Uh, compatibility with plans and policies. We believe the apartment complex is consistent with the adjacent uh, apartments as part of PD 1601. As you saw a few minutes ago, colors and materials uh, match. Uh, consistent with the zoning ordinance. Uh, consistent with the, that first development, uh, would use proposing an, an underlying RM2 uh, zoning for all of the setbacks and uh, floor error ratio. I think their build out is about 40% of what they could do under that density, so they're well within that. Uh, compatibility with the surrounding area. Uh, as I mentioned, it's adjacent to Kirby Park uh, Villas Phase 1. Uh, retail and commercial uses, you've got Walmart, Walgreens, retail stores in the area. Uh, four, uh, at one time, uh, that zoning was commercial within there. Most of the development for commercial has been along the commercial corridor to the west on the east side of Highway 87, uh, where uh, that being an arterial road, uh, as you go eastward, it tends to be more residential. So we believe the multifamily apartments are probably suitable there. Uh, it's sort of a transition between the lower density development to the east and the commercial development to the west and north. Uh, no effects anticipated on the natural environment uh, as part of platting and permitting, uh, grading, drainage, and stormwater would be, would be addressed at that time. Uh, we believe there's definitely a community need. Uh, the city uh, had labeled this area as part of their community development target area their housing division. Uh, COSA, I understand, is providing a uh, construction loan uh, for this uh, project as well. And so if that uh, does go through and, and it's, uh, it moves forward, uh, that loan would be, would be provided. So we, given that it was a target area in the development plan, we believe this, this would be a good uh, project for the, uh, for the area, bring some more uh, uh, housing there. And finally, the uh, development patterns, the future access as mentioned, would be required. Uh, they could connect to West 29th or another way, but uh, that could be, like I say, dealt with uh, at the platting stage. Um, additional traffic, we believe, can be accommodated in this case, given the existing street network. Uh, the site plan submitted has the 26-foot wide fire lane, so uh, it appears that this would be a good um, development that could connect to the street network and shouldn't have any, uh, 72 units shouldn't have any major impact on the traffic. I notifications were mailed out. Uh, we have not received any in favor or opposition at this time. So staff recommendation is to approve the rezoning on the entire 5.244 acre property from the general commercial CG and general commercial heavy commercial CGCH zoning districts uh, to the planned development PD 1701 zoning district subject to the eight conditions of approval uh, in your staff report if you need those right in or not. That concludes the presentation. Any questions? Any public comment? <coughs> Good morning. I'm Paul Holden. I represent Zimmerman Properties, and um, I'm the one who's put this um, property together. And I just wanted to say thank you for allowing us to come and, and be in front of you. Now, the situation on this is that uh, we haven't received funding yet for this property, but uh, we're expecting it in October. And so in order to get ready for this uh, anticipated funding, I wanted to come through the zoning, get it to that point, and once we get zoning, then we'll get to the city council if, if you approve today. But in combination with the seniors' property that is just to the north uh, of this site, and the <clears throat> there's a uh, stoplight and uh, crosswalk at, on 29th that goes over to the Walmart, I, and the other commercial areas around this, I think this is going to be a sensational uh, couple of properties in this location because it gives a wonderful transition between uh, different uh, land use types. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Will this be for seniors also? No, ma'am. This is for families. For families, So okay. we're going to segregate the 72 units for seniors and then the 72 for families. Okay. Um, they, too, will work together, but uh, they will be separate ownership entities. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. Any thank other you. questions? Thank you very thank much. You, I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. Sammy made the motion. Second. Terry seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, 7 0. <coughs> All right, B, PD 17 04, Hughes, Rutteroya Inn. Good 
morning, Planning Commission. This is Christina Heredia with the City of San Angelo for the record. Today we are here to discuss PP 1704, Hughes Red Arroyo Inn. Um, if you recall, this case was, this uh, property was brought before you as a conditional use a few months ago. The conditional use, however, it was determined wasn't feasible for the applicant once they went through and talked to the building official. So we have redone it as a PD. Um, it is on uh, the northwest side of Sherwood between Southwest Boulevard and Buick Street, and it is zoned general commercial. So as right now it is zoned commercial, uh, general commercial with the future land use of commercial. And these are the same photos I showed you a few months ago. So it is the um, uh, Red Arroyo Inn, which was originally set up to be a motel hotel. However, they have been working as apartment buildings for the last year. Um, they are part of the Red Arroyos Plaza, which includes Credit World and Tire World, and they are across the street from Buffalo Wild Wings. And here is um, more properties along Sherwood. So our rationale for approval of the um, plan development is the first is that the conditional use, which they did apply for and were approved for, was for household living. Um, <coughs> since household living, which would be an apartment, is not something that is feasible under the current setup of the building, um, the building official came up with the idea that they could operate as a boarding house instead, which is pretty similar to how they have been renting out. However, boarding house falls under group living. Group living is not allowed um, as a conditional use or under the conditional use that was approved. So their only option is to change the zoning on that. The only way you can do that and still allow the two businesses to exist is to do it as a planned development. Our other rationale is pretty similar to what we had before, is that there are other apartment buildings in the area. Um, we don't anticipate any um, downtown development effects on the development. They, um, as the units are currently rented out, we do feel that shows a trend in affordable housing being a requirement. And there is a residential presence um, all the way around Sherwood. So we did send out 22 notifications, and we did not receive any in favor or any in opposition. And we are recommending approval of the rezoning from the general commercial uh, zoning district to a planned development subject to two conditions. And these are the same two conditions that we had for the conditional use. The one is that they have um, 120 days to get that change of occupancy. And that number two, they are not allowed to rent out any additional units until the situation is um, rectified. And that is it. Do you guys have any questions for me? Why, oh. why weren't they allowed to have an apartment complex in the building? Um, the setup of the, of the individual units doesn't meet the requirements <clears throat> for an apartment building on size and certain conditions as like where the sink would be located, um, how big the stove could be. So the best option that we felt would, without them having to completely gut the area of the building would be to work as a boarding house. Um, and we have someone from building here who can speak on the differences between those two. Great. Thank you. All right, public comment. Public comment. Who, who was going to speak on the differences? I'd like to know. Tyler Martin, Permits Department. I have some notes from Al Torres, the building official. He was working on this project before. So the, each uh, apartment, apartment only has a lavatory sink in it. It does not have a kitchen sink. And for it to be used as an apartment, it has to have a kitchen sink and a separate lavatory sink. So you can't wash your dishes in the bathroom, and there are certain dimension requirements for a kitchen space. Uh, you have to have uh, a living room of not less than 220 square feet of floor area. An additional 100 square feet of floor area shall be provided for each occupant of such unit in excess of two, and uh, the unit shall be provided with a separate closet. The unit shall be provided with a kitchen sink, cooking appliance, and refrigeration facilities each having a clear working space of not less than 30 inches in front, light and ventilation conforming to this code shall be provided. 
and the unit shall be provided with a separate bathroom containing a water closet, lavatory, and bathtub or shower. And each of these units does not have all of those requirements for an apartment. Okay. So this was built as a. It was originally a, a built. Part, a part. I mean, a, like a hotel. It was. It was originally permitted to be a hotel. Okay. And then they started using it as apartments without getting permission to do so. Okay. So now they're trying to just basically make it right as to. Okay. Any other questions? Are there any landscaping requirements that are a condition of this approval? Uh, we did not add any additional landscaping requirements, mainly because the area is, is already pretty much paved out. And so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Any other public comment? <clears throat> All right. There being none, do I have a motion? Amy made the motion. Second. Mark seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seven zero. All right, going down to C, Z1712, City of San Angelo. Good morning again. Christina Heredi with the city for the record. To, um, today I am to present a zone change for the Sunset Mall area. This was a item that was asked to be presented last month to you guys, so we have prepared it for you. The total area around the mall that is zoned general commercial, heavy commercial is a little over 92 acres. It includes the, whole, the mall itself and then properties along Sunset and along um, Sherwood uh, Southwest. It is in the Sunset neighborhood and single member district number six. So the future land use is commercial and the current zoning is general commercial, heavy commercial, which is um, the black with the shaded on here, that line. Everything else around it is either zoned residential, which is this area right here, or all is zoned general commercial. So I have a, I put a few photos in the staff report as well as on here that just some of the businesses that are going to be affected by the zone change. One is obviously the mall itself. There's the surrounding a small shopping center. Uh, it goes all the way up to Target and, uh, and, Red, and then down to Red Lobster. And then also across the street, the only thing on the across the street from it would be the um, vacant building that used to have the 4220 Meats and Sweets, and then Chili's, which is on the, the service road side. So we are recommending approval. Um, the first reason is that simply the city no longer utilizes the CGCH zoning district. We feel that after looking at all the businesses that are currently located on um, the property and then on the adjacent roads, they are all compatible with CG, CG zoning, general commercial. There are no uses right now that fall under a heavy commercial use, and as such, doing a zone change to heavy commercial is not a viable option. The main re con change condition is that our city council decided that CGCH needed to be um, removed, and as we go through our, and do zoning changes or they're brought to our attention, we update them to the most zone. We don't anticipate any effect on the natural envir environment. There are some vac vacant uh, storefronts along sh Sunset, and so there may be construction, but that would be temporary as they come in, and that would not be, that wouldn't matter what the zone on it was. Um, as this whole area has consolidly developed in a retail fashion with uh, surrounding residential, we don't anticipate that um, this would not go, that this would go against community need. And also, it, historically, the mall has always developed in a retail fashion, and so we feel it follows development patterns as well. So we did send out 72 notifications. We received eight in favor. Um, all those eight came from surrounding uh, residential uses. We did receive one in opposition, which is the mall itself. The mall did send us a letter addressing some of their concerns, and so I wanted to take a moment just to talk about those. Uh, the first was uh, car repair. Car repair, and I, um, I gave this to all of you guys. Anything in yellow is currently allowed outright in the general commercial zoning district. Anything that is green is allowed through a conditional use. Currently, all of these uses are allowed in the CGCH zoning. So the main difference for the mall would be that some uses might require conditional use. Uh, whereas right now they are currently allowed by right. So car repair, um, if you think of like the, a Sears auto repair, any repair that requires that um, 
it doesn't take a lot of time, you're doing your tires, you're doing an oil change, that is actually allowed by right in the general commercial zoning district. Um, if you're doing heavy repair where you may drop your car for, for a few days or collision repair, that's allowed but only through a conditional use. Distribution centers um, are not allowed outright, they would need a conditional use. However, since the mall is mainly for retail shopping, a distribution center may not necessarily be the best fit for that area anyways. Indoor entertainment. Now this, this one gave us a little bit of, um, a little tricky. We have two different classifications for um, an indoor entertainment. One is allowed outright through the, um, through the zoning, zoning ordinance under retail sales and services. The other one is called a game hall or game arcade. Those, um, it, it's more of an archaic zoning. We don't actually even have a definition of it in our book and it's something that we're considering changing Right now, it is only allowed through a conditional use. We're looking to make that something that we could allow outright through general commercial. And then uh, plant sales. There was a question of concern about plant nurseries. We allow plant sales and garden equipment sales to be allowed outright through retail sales and services. It is when you're talking about a mass production where the plants are produced and grown through greenhouses, that is not allowed. But a business that sold you know, almost as a secondary, mm -hmm. one of the things they sold was plants, that would be allowed. And then lastly, this, um, while we understand there is concern regarding the zone change, it is something that has to occur through a council directive, and we strongly feel that general commercial is the best fit for this area. So with that said, we are recommending approval of the rezoning from general commercial, heavy commercial, to the general commercial zoning district. And this is my presentation. Do you have any questions for me? I have a question. So, if we pass this today, why does it even affect the mall and Sears and all those other guys that are already operating, right? I'm sorry. If this thing, if we pass this today, explain to me why it would, why would it even affect the mall in the first place? They're already operating, so. It wouldn't affect the mall directly unless they decided um, to lease out new spaces or sell some of those pad sites. We had the plat come in where they decided to break up some of the land adjacent to the frontage road last month. Um, there are a few uses that are currently allowed through the CGCH zoning that are not allowed um, unless you have a conditional use through general commercial. Some of those is, um, number one is the game hall that we I just talked that we're talking, uh, staff wants to switch itself. Rental equipment, industrial services, warehouse and freight movement, and wholesale trade. Those businesses are currently allowed by right in the general commercial, heavy commercial zoning district. If we switch to general commercial, any of the vacant properties that come in, either um, actually at the mall or adjacent to the mall, would have to apply for conditional use for those. So in actuality, there's really no, there's no use that is completely denied. It's just through a conditional use process, which allows us to make sure that noise, um, you know, and landscaping and We have to change the zoning anyway, right? It doesn't sound like any of those uses would be conditional. Um, no, I don't. All the current the uses would be compliant under CG. Correct. Every current some, use that some is may there. require a approval by us. They'd be a conditional use, but all of them are permitted under CG. Awesome. Thank if you. If they're, if they're already in business such as Sears Automotive, they do not have to do a... No, Sears Automotive currently qualifies under limited service, which would is allowed by right. There is nothing that would have to have... A, because there, was, there is nothing in the area that becomes legal nonconforming by the zone change. There is an intention to change the verbiage to allow, because I know they've got the putt-putt course there, and if they were to put an arcade in the mall or something like that, there's an intention to change the current verbiage to allow Game them. Hall, yeah. So current indoor continuous entertainment activities includes bowling alleys, ice rinks, dance halls, theaters, health clubs, gym membership clubs, lodges, hotels, and motels. Those all fall, all fall under indoor continuous entertainment. One of the um, proposed uses we had heard was perhaps the Dave & Buster's. And because Dave & Buster's is mainly for entertainment purposes and not a necessarily monetary game, monetary gain, we feel that we interpreted that as indoor continuous entertainment activity versus game hall, which would be like the bingo parlor that's on Chadburn. However, we are uh, thinking about changing that to being allowed as well. 
or at least the, the definition of what falls under that. At this point. No. Okay. Yeah, that's what I don't, I don't yeah. think anybody's hurt by this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment. I'm Steve Niles. I'm the uh, general manager at Sunset Mall, and I appreciate you uh, having this uh, open public hearing, and, and I definitely appreciate Christina and your staff and all the help that uh, they've given us, uh, trying to educate us on what the uh, heavy commercial uh, zoning is and, and what's all contained within that. And, and we are opposed uh, primarily for the things that she had brought up uh, that were in our letter that we composed to you. And um, uh, really not for the current existing uses that we have because they all fall within the uh, general commercial uh, or the general retail uh, commercial part of uh, the zoning. But, um, uh, but for future, uh, we don't know what the future holds. Uh, the, the state of retail is ever changing. Uh, and um, one, of the, one of the main topics we brought up was a retail distribution center. And uh, we don't know that uh, our retail might not just be only fulfilling, um, you know, and distributing goods, no longer a point of sale. So uh, when that happens, I mean, uh, we would have to, um, we would fall outside of the zoning. Uh, so, um, you know, we would like to uh, uh, not have our ability to, uh, negotiate with uh, prospective tenants, um, limited in any way. Uh, if we have to apply for a conditional use, that could be the thing that keeps us from being able to bring forward um, a retailer that, uh, uh, that we really would like to use, especially uh, you bring up the Dave and Busters. Not that we're speaking to them and, and, uh, uh, and not, but um, uh, if that were to happen and we ended up having to go in front and and um, uh, you know, argue our case in that regard, it could be um, that they decide to go somewhere else instead. The competition is uh, so great uh, that anything that might stand in the way could limit us in our ability to, you know, to be able to bring forward these type of uh, uses. Uh, and, um, first and foremost, we will always look at highest and best use. I think that, um, that that's always first and foremost on our mind, uh, that we owe it to our creator, uh, we owe it to our community to use highest and best use. But to limit us in the ability to do our highest and best use for our piece of real estate um, is difficult to accept. And so um, that's why we uh, are opposed and uh, you know, we ask that uh, you consider our argument in that case. Thank you, sir. Any Thank questions? You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Russell Gully. Uh, this I, I'm struggling with the mandate of forcing someone to change the use of their property. You're effectively taking away and deducting value from their property. Those people who are, are in favor of this absolutely zone change them. But if you have someone here in opposition to a request to look at changing the zoning of their property, um, it's not fair to them. Mr. Stribling, you probably own property. How about if the city came in and decided they wanted to change the zoning of your property to something you were not in favor of? This is a very touchy situation, I believe. You know, you really need to respect the property owner's rights. You vote in favor of changing their zoning from a CGCH to the CG, you're not respecting the rights that they have of ownership of this property. They're not, and, or the, you're not required to rezone their property. It was just, let's bring it up, let's talk about it. Uh, so there is no obligation to have to change I think ours was more directed from the city council. Yeah, and, and the so other I issue, that would be, Russell, is yeah. the broadness of CGCH. Um, that's, you can do just about anything with CGCH. It was a zoning that probably should have never been implemented in this community. And the city council has, has obviously recognized that and asked us 
when, when it's brought to our attention, especially on a large track like this, to address the issue and, and select zoning that is obviously in, in consistent with the, the development that's around it. I, we're, there's nothing that's, that's limited or restricted or changed by changing the zoning. Everything that's, that, that is currently being used on that property is allowed to be used. Sure, currently, but not in the future. And, okay. and what, there, what are some of the large... uses of heavy commercial that would not be allowed for this property if we change the zoning? How many retailers are struggling to exist today because of all this online stuff? And they may, they may need, as they, as he spoke, they may need to transition to be a more of a distribution. So I, 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 I respect that, but there's a lot of CGCH zoning throughout this city. If the city council wants to do away with zoning altogether, that's, that's a whole different argument. But we have zoning in place for a reason, and it's to have consistent development and to encourage development in certain areas and to, for, for neighbors to be understanding of, of what's around them when they make those decisions to buy. A absolutely. But we're, we are taking an existing situation. We're not asking the city to go from CG to CGCH. The there's city nothing, is taking away a right that they there's have. There's nothing that's currently being done on any of this land that's being rezoned that would not be allowed to be continued to be done on this land. If, nothing. If it, not a if, single use anywhere on this property so that we're rezoning. So if you owned a piece of property and it was vacant and it was a CH and, and they said, oh, there's nothing being done. Let's downzone it to CG. How would you feel about that? Well, that, it, that's not fair to you. That's not fair to these people. I, I'm just good. asking you to respect that, yeah. Mr. Stripling. I, 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 you brought it up last time, and I know city yeah. councils. I'm just wanting you to consider well, let, I, that. What, do, what do we ask the staff to, to please rights? tell us what's, what's allowed by CH? Yeah. It's not allowed by CG? Okay. So if it's not that significant of a change, why force the change? Yeah, and I think maybe that's a question you need to ask the city council. Okay. I mean, we have our directive, and I think that's a question as to why are you changing it would be a city council question. A absolutely. I'm just asking you to consider property rights. We'll, we'll okay. consider them. Yes, sir. The other piece of it, too, is that it, they're not saying that it couldn't have something that falls under the CH. It just They're just saying that it would have to be a special use so they would be able to um, give recommendation to landscaping or fencing. or If that did turn into a distribution center and I lived in that area, I wouldn't want to look at it. I'd want some appropriate fencing and landscaping. And so, I mean, just it makes correction. complete it, sense. It wouldn't even require a special use. It wouldn't have to go <laughs> before council. Right. It would be a conditional use, which would stop here. Right. And I think you hit the nail on the head. These more intense uses, which would require conditional use, and sir, you were correct. There is no use that was being proposed by the mall or by anyone else that would not be required, that would not be allowed without a conditional use. The whole purpose of the conditional use, because there are more intense uses, this area was not built. It just wasn't built to accommodate those heavier traffic. And by a conditional use, we have the ability to mitigate for it. If that turned into a distribution center in the middle of a residential area, we'd have a citywide uprising. I'm sorry, that's just not an appropriate area for a distribution center, so. infrastructure in and of itself as it stands is not right. would not be conducive for heavy traffic for like that kind traffic. of heavy traffic with tra I mean right. there's no way there's too many twists there's too many turns there's narrow streets it would it, it would be a disaster area anyway any more public comment any more That's questions not the only thing that that could be applied for there is a distribution center. No, I know. There's but other they, things that's just and brought up, so that's and I, I'm you know that. I'm not speaking for our mall but malls in general are struggling. No, of course not. And they're they are. grasping for other things yep. to do to make to make it work. And and just like he said, I, I you know, when he goes and sits down at the table with the vendor that's talking about coming here and he starts saying, "Well, we got to get a special they're going, "Forget it, we're going to another town," you know. So I can kind of see where I understand where uh, where it would be a, a tough thing to can you see the logic of putting a distribution center in there, Sandy? I, I, I said there's no, sir. Right. No, but there are other things that could be asked for that are not distribution centers. 
But I think I think we as a planning commission in the city needs to be able to have some control over one what goes there and two how it is outfitted in terms of protecting the residential area around there. So I mean I, I think the zoning change would allow them to have some say so in that. Mr. Thomas, do you do you would you like to speak to this from the council side of things? Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's our so job. That's the only reason why we're up here. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No. All right. No other public comment? All right. There being none, do I have a motion? I made a motion to approve. Ryan second. made the motion to approve. Travis made a second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. 7 0. All right. We're down to DZ1713 Pierce. Good morning. Hillary Buecher, Senior Planner. I'm here to present to you <coughs> Z1713 Pierce. This is a six acre, um, six 1.16 acre lots totaling 0.966. The addresses are 2802 through 2822 Houston Street, uh, single member district number two, Tom Thompson, the Bluffs neighborhood. The future land use for this project is neighborhood and the existing zoning is neighborhood commercial. So this is a kind of a bird's eye view of the area you can see to the north, um, to the east and west is residential. This fronts the Loop 306 and there is one uh, commercial property in front. So these are just some site photos looking west toward the site. There is one existing home that was approved by a conditional use 1603, so it is built. The other ones were not able to be built because of some um, setbacks with a water line that was being installed. So they were coming back to look to develop the other ones and we decided a zone change would be the appropriate measure. So this is looking east towards the site from Houston Street and then just the general site photo. It's compatible with the future land use of neighborhood. It's consistent with the surrounding areas of RS1 and it's adjacent to single family residential so it continues with the flow. Um, there are some properties that have developed commercially along the freeway or along the loop but most of the properties north of that have become residential. There's no anticipated negative effects on the environment and this property has remained vacant as CN and now we are looking to expand single family residential. And the development pattern again to the north is mostly residential. We mailed out 10 notices. Oh, that's actually we mailed out more than that. I'm sorry, we, measured, we mailed out 24 notices and we've re received um, one in favor and zero in opposition. We are recommending approval of the rezoning from CN to RS1 to accommodate this use. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions? Oh, man. Public comment? There being none, do I have a motion? Mark made the motion to approve it. Second. Terry seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, seven zero. <coughs> <coughs> street name changes. City Council has final authority for approval of street name changes. A. Lighthouse Lane. Good morning again, Hillary Buchert. We're going over a small piece of Lighthouse Lane. It's approximately 120 linear feet. We're looking to rename it to Chesney Lane. Um, the remainder of the street came in on a new plat, and the new plat named it Chesney, so we are just continuing the name. This is beginning at Aspen Avenue, continuing southeast in single member district one, Tommy Hubert, and Nasworthy neighborhood. To show you the existing and the future land use around it is neighborhood and RS1. Again, it's just this little piece that goes from Aspen to the alley to the back. So a kind of a bird's eye view, the existing street sign of the small little stub out street from a old proper or old residential development and some surrounding pictures. You can see on this photo that actually the street in the back has been built, so we are just cleaning it up. So this is looking from the newly constructed Chesney Lane to the existing Lighthouse Lane, just the 120-foot portion. 
So this would clarify the street name over the whole area. Um, also, it would uh, distinguish it from Lighthouse Way here in central San Angelo. So this would unify it. We mailed out two notices and received zero in favor and zero in opposition. We're recommending approval from Lighthouse Lane to Chesney Lane. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any public comment? There being none, do I have a motion? Move to approve. Ryan made a motion. Terry seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, seven zero. All right, number four, major thoroughfare plan amendments. City Council has final authority for approval of major thoroughfare plan amendments. Uh, A, master thoroughfare plan amendment, City of San Angelo. Larry Buecher, senior planner again. We're gonna go over the master thoroughfare plan amendment. It's approximately 715 acre area. So you can see on the map, it's kind of an orange area. It's north of Clubhouse Lane, east of North Bentwood Drive, south of Luke 306 and west of Foster in single member district one, Tommy Hebert, country club neighborhood. So the future land use of this area is predominantly residential. There is a little bit of transitional to the north and neighborhood commercial, um, but this shows the existing master plan. And then the existing zoning is on the right side of the screen. And it's kind of a mixed zoning, excuse me, as well the area in the white is not currently in the city limits of San Angelo. So the green is R&E, the yellow is RS1, uh, orange would be RM1. So there's, a, there's a, quite a bit of mixed use in this area. This is kind of a bird's eye view. Um, toward the middle left of your screen, you can see kind of the little lakes of the golf course. The north would be the Bentwood development, and then to the east would be Foster Road and uh, Butler Farms. Then a large area of undeveloped land is kind of what we're looking at. So planning for the future, this uh, originally was brought up as part of Bentwood coming in with another uh, section of their development. It brought to our attention that the Master Thoroughfare Plan could be amended to accommodate for future development in this area. So the lines, you want to step up here as well, I'm sorry, Jeff needs to step up here as well to go through some of this. So just very quickly, the general north-south collector, we removed 1A, it kind of ran through the middle of the proposed new Bentwood and scooted it over to what is now 1. So you can see a light blue line that is now 1. The east-west collectors, we removed the current 2A as it ran too close to the loop when it connected in with the arterial. 3A, was a old portion that was not used as a collector, so we removed that. And 4A, we kind of split the new two as to the 2A and the 4A. So the new two will kind of make up as the collector for that area. The north-south arterial, we realigned minorly with the 5A alignment to allow for a little bit uh, faster traffic. The uh, existing curves were a little bit narrow and a little bit tight for their uh, speeds, so. Okay, uh, Jeff is your senior planner as well. We're just gonna go over uh, some of the rationale uh, for the uh, thoroughfare plan uh, amendment that, you, that you've been given a handout of, uh, and just a quick overview of, of some of the comments received back before you make a decision on this today. Uh, so Hillary is mentioning the um, removal of the current uh, 1A, that's the white dotted line, and, and shifting it over. That's consistent with the governing preliminary plat uh, for Bentwood uh, Country Club Estates uh, for all of that land. Uh, the, the current um, proposal uh, of Section 39, their plat that's pending, uh, this decision today, uh, would have had the, um, uh, they had it as a local road, and so we believe that shifting it over uh, is, is more appropriate, would allow that development to continue and still provide uh, a collector street uh, in the future. So that's what we're, we're looking at there. So that's, that's our first um, case here. Also, by shifting it over, you have a direct connection to the arterial. Uh, that's consistent too with our master thoroughfare plan. If you have a, a collector street, uh, the collector should essentially connect to an arterial. So uh, if it was over here, you can see it kind of dead ends here to another collector. So for those reasons, we believe that's, that's most appropriate uh, in the future. And uh, the second piece of this is removing uh, 2A, 3A, and 4A. 
these are extra collectors that go east-west, so there's 2A, uh, there's 3A, and um, there's, uh, there's 4A there, excuse me, wrong way. Uh, a lot of these developments uh, had received for Bentwood in here. Um, the last four phases uh, got approvals uh, for a reduction in the street width as a local road. So from here to here, it doesn't make sense to have a collector anymore. It wouldn't be consistent with what was approved. So since this is already uh, done, uh, the this part of the collector would be removed. Uh, this part here, 2A, is very close to loop 306. So we believe that having uh, an extended collector going this way, 3A, uh, there's really no need for this one and this one because this one would really serve the same purpose and for the additional lot yield. And then finally, uh, Hillary is mentioning the current um, arterial, future arterial that kind of comes in like swoops like this. It's very tight. This is up to high speeds in connecting to loop 306. This is Foster Road. Uh, so we believe that, that sort of steepening the curve, straightening it out a little bit would be more appropriate, but that, of course, there isn't any other change other than that that, that shift. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to say was we, we did circulate uh, private and public agencies. The only comment we got back was from uh, Atmos. They indicated that there's a location of a, a high-pressured um, gas line, which kind of does this through here. So uh, when you move the uh, collectors, uh, the old collectors, and take them away and, and looking at the new collectors, there's still two um, connection points through that gas line. So uh, they're essentially um, okay with that, that change, uh, provided as future developments of Benwood and other subdivisions go in um, at the platting phase, they look at the gas lines and make sure that there's no issues there. They can deal with it later. So that was it. Um, so going forward, uh, we recommend uh, the Master Thur Thoroughfare Plan Amendment that um, Planning Commission approves that uh, in the Bentwood area, north of Clubhouse, east of North Bentwood Drive, south of West Loop 306, and west of Foster Road. Um, Hillary and I had also attended the, um, the MPO meeting. Uh, there were no further comments uh, at this time. If you have any other questions for us, feel free. Any questions? Thank you. Public comment. No public comment? All right. Being none, do I have a motion? I move to approve. Mark made the motion to approve it. Ryan seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ryan. Ryan. All right. Next, we have the director's report. A few, uh, few items to uh, update you on. Uh, you may recall that we had the uh, item on churches and bars and separation. Uh, and I shouldn't say bars. It should be alcohol any alcohol permit is how that's worded um, that was taken to the city council and they tabled it asking us to bring them more information and so that's going to the city council meeting tomorrow morning uh, so they'll be taking that up again uh, also tomorrow the item that you just voted on uh, with the master thoroughfare plan amendment uh, based on some timing with a particular development we're taking that ahead of schedule and so it's actually uh, going to the uh, council on tomorrow's meeting as well uh, and just a couple of updates on things we're looking at. Uh, we have been working with the uh, Design and Historic Review Commission on zoning ordinance amendments to the uh, downtown and historic river corridor uh, overlay zoning elements. And so that'll be com coming to them fairly soon. And so you'll be seeing that soon as well. Uh, one other issue that we recently started looking into, uh, some of the areas in town with zero lot line developments, meaning uh, one of the homes can be on, right on the, the property line. Uh, we've had some issues with the adjacent property owner building porches or pergolas uh, that come too close to that adjacent home. Um, so rather than going out and in, enforcing that immediately, we're taking a step back and looking at whether or not we want to relax uh, the setbacks in those areas. Uh, we're also working with the fire marshal to ensure that whatever relaxations we do uh, aren't negatively affecting uh, you know, fire code and, and those sort of issues. Uh, and then finally, we've discussed uh, with the development task force and within the next two or three months, we'll be bringing you some uh, minor changes to the subdivision ordinance uh, to clean up some things. So you'll be hearing more about that soon. I think that's, that's all I have for today. All right. Uh, future meeting agenda and announcements. The next meeting will of the Planning Commission is tentatively scheduled to begin at 9 a.m. on Monday, October the 16th in the Council Chambers. 
Um, it is 10 o'clock. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Okay, Terry made it, Ryan seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings Aye. adjourned. Aye. <laughs> <laughs>